Chapter 19. In case you don't live in New York, the Wicker Bar is in, the, in this sort of swanky hotel, the Satin Hotel. I used to go there quite a lot, but I don't anymore. I gradually cut it out. It's one of those places that are supposed to be very sophisticated and all. And the phonies, the phonies are coming in the window. They used to have these two French babies, Tina and Janine. Come out and play the piano and sing about three times every night. One of them played the piano strictly lousy, and the other, uh, the other one sang. And most of the songs, most of the songs were either pretty dirty or in French. The one that sang, old Janine, was always whispering into the goddamn microphone before she sang. She'd say, "And now." We like to give you our impression of Wooly Woo Fantasy. It is the story of a little French girl who comes to big city, just like New York, and then fall in love with a little boy from Brooklyn. We hope you like it. Then. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And falls in, uh, and when she was all done whispering and being cute as hell, she'd sing some dupe song, half in English and half in French, and drive all the phonies in the place made, um, place made mad with joy. The people sat around there long enough and heard all the phonies applauding and all. You got to hate everybody in the world. I swear you did. The bartender was a low, loose too. He was a big snob. He didn't talk to you at all hardly. Use, he didn't talk to you at all hardly, unless you were a big shot or a celebrity or something. If you were a big shot or a celebrity or something, then he was even more nauseating. Nauseating. He'd go up to you and say. With this big charming smile, like he was a hell of a swell guy, if you knew him. Well, how's Connecticut or how's Florida? It was a terrible place. I'm not kidding. I cut out of going. I cut out going there entirely, gradually. It was pretty early when I got there. I sat down at the bar. It was pretty crowded, and they had a couple of scotch and sodas. But for old loose, even showed up. I stood up when I ordered them, so they could see how tall I was, and all uh, I was and all, and not think I was a goddamn miner. Then I watched. Then I watched the ponies for a while. Some guy next to me was snowing hell out of the tail. Uh, babe, he was with. He kept telling her she had aristocrat aristocratic hands. They killed me. The other end of the bar was full of pleats. They weren't too pleated looking. I mean, they didn't have their hair too long or anything. But you could tell they were pleats anyway. Finally, old Luce showed up. Old Luce, what a guy. He was supposed to be my student advisor when I was at Witten. Witten. The only thing he ever did, though, was give these sex talks and all. Late at night, when there was a bunch of guys in his room, he knew quite a bit about sex, especially perverts at home. He was always telling us about a lot of creepy guys that go around having affairs with a with a ship, and the guys that go around with the girls' pants sewed in the lining of their hats and all, and fleets and the lesbians. All the dudes knew. Who every fleece and the lesbian in the United States was. All you had to do was mention somebody, anybody, and the old loose to tell you if he was a fleet or not. Sometimes it was hard to believe. The people he said were fleets and the lesbians and all. Movies, movie actors, and the like that. Some of the ones he said were fleets were even married. For God's sake. You'd keep saying to him, 
You mean Joe blow, Joe blows blows a uh, fleet? Joe Blow? That big top guy that plays general gangsters and the cowboys all the time? All the loose to say. Certainly. He was always saying certainly. He said it. Uh, he said it didn't matter if a guy was married or not. He said a hop the married guys in the world were fleets and they didn't even know it. He said you could turn into one practically overnight. If you had all the tra traits and all. If you had all the traits and all. He used to scare the hell out of us. I kept waiting to turn into a fleet or something. The funny thing about the old loose, I used to think he was a sort of a fleety himself in a way. He was always saying, Try this precise, and then he's goosed the hell out of you while you were going down the corridor. And whenever he went to the camp, he always left the goddamn door open and talked to you while you were brushing your teeth or something. That stuff's sort of a fleety. It really is. I've known quite a few rear fleets at schools and all, and they are always doing stuff like that, and that's why I. I always had my doubt about the old rules. He was a pretty intelligent guy, though. He really was. He never said hello or anything when he met he met you. The first thing he had he said when he sat down was the, was that he could only stay a couple of minutes. He said he had a date. Then he ordered ordered a dry martini. He told me. He told the bartender to make it very dry and no olive. Hey, I got a plate for you, I told him. At the end of the bar, don't you, don't look now. I've been saying him for ya. I've been saying him for ya. Very funny, he said. Some old Caulfield, when are you going to grow up? I bored him a lot. I really did. He amused me, though. He was one of those guys that sort of amused me a lot. How's your sex life? I asked him. He hated you to ask him stuff like that. Relax, he said. Just to sit back and relax, for Christ's sake. I'm relaxed, I said. How's Colombia? You like it? Certainly I like it. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't have gone there, he said. He could be pretty boring himself sometimes. Uh, what are you measuring in? I asked him. Pervert? I was only horsing around. Are you trying to be funny? No, I'm only kidding. I said, listen, hey, Luz, you are one of these intellect, intell, intellectual, intellectual guys. I needed your advice. I'm in a terrific... He let out his big groan on me. Listen, Carfield, if you want to sit here and have a quiet, peaceful drink and a quiet, peaceful conver- All right, all right, I said, relax. You could tell he didn't feel like discussing anything serious with me. That's the trouble with these intellectual guys. They never want to discuss anything serious unless they feel like it. So all I did was, I started discussing topics in general with him. No kidding. How's your sex life? I asked him. You still going around with that same babe you used to have? What then? The one with the terrific? Good God, no, he said. How come? What happened to her? I have the faintest uh, I have the faintest idea. For all I know, since you ask, she's probably the whore of New Hampshire by this time. That is nice. If she was decent enough to let you get sex with her all the time, you at least shouldn't talk about her that way. Oh god, all the loose said. Is this going to be a typical car field conversation? I want to know right now. No, I said. But it isn't nice anyway. If she was decent and nice enough to let you... 
must we pursue this horrible trend of thought? Must we pursue this horrible trend of thought? I didn't say anything. I was sort of afraid that he'd get up and leave on me if I didn't shut up. So all I did was I ordered another drink. I felt like getting stink stinking drunk. Who are you going around with now? I asked him. You feel like telling me? Nobody you know. Yeah, but who? I might know her. Girl lives in the village. Skull, uh, skull trees, if you must know. Yeah, no kidding. How old is she? I've never asked her, for God's sake. Well, around how old? I should imagine she's in her late thirties. Older Lu said, "In her late thirties? Yeah, you like that?" I asked him. "You like them? And, like a, you like them that old?" The reason I was asking was because he really knew quite a bit about sex and all. He was one of the few guys I knew that did. He lost his virgin virginity. virginity Uh, when he was only 14, in Nantucket, he really did. I like a mature person. If that's what you mean, certainly. You do? Why? No kidding. They better for sex and all. Questions tonight. Uh, listen, let's get one thing straight. I refuse to answer any typical Caulfield question tonight. When in hell are you... When in hell are you going to grow up? I didn't say anything for a while. I let it drop for a while. Then old Luz ordered another martini and told the bartender to make it a lot drier. Listen, how long you been going around with her? This is scriptural, babe? I asked him. I was really interested. Did you know her when you were at Wooten? Hardly. She just arrived in this country a few months ago. She did? Where is she from? She happens to be from Shanghai. No kidding, she Chinese. For Christ's sake, obviously. No kidding, do you like that? Her being Chinese? Obviously. Why? I'd be interested to know. I really would. I simply happen to find Eastern philosophy more satisfactory than Western. Since you ask. You do? What do you mean philosophy? You mean sex and all? You mean it's better in China? The, what you mean? Not necessarily in China, for God's sake. The, the East, I said, must we go on with, uh, with this inane conversation? Listen, I'm serious, I said. No kidding. Why is it better in the East? Is too involved to go into, for God's sake, old Luz said. They simply happen to regard sex as both a physical and a spiritual experience, if you think I am. So do I. So do I regard it as a, what do you call it, a physical and a spiritual experience and all. I really do. But it depends on who the hell I'm doing it with. If I'm doing it with somebody, I don't even... Not so loud, for God's sake. Carfield, if you can't manage to keep your voice down, let's drop the whole... Alright, but I... But listen, I said, I was getting excited and I was talking a little too loud. Sometimes, I talk a little loud when I get excited. This is what I mean though, I said. I know it's supposed to be physical and spiritual. And artistic and all. But what I mean is... You can't do it with everybody, every girl you neck with and all, and make it come out that way, can you? Let's drop it, old Lou said. Do you mind? All right, but listen, take you and this Chinese babe, what's so good about you two? Drop it, I said. I was getting a little too personal, I realized that. But that was one of the annoying things about Luz. When we were at Whitney, he'd make you describe the most personal stuff that happened to you. But if you started asking him questions about himself, he got sore. 
these intellectual intellectual guys don't like to have an in, intellectual conversation with you unless they are learning the whole thing they always want to shut up when they slot slot up and go back to your room when they go back to their room when i was at witten all the loose used to hate it you really could tell he did when after he was finished giving his sex talk to a bunch of us in his room we stuck around and chewed the fat by ourselves for a while. I mean the other guys and myself. In somebody else's room. All the loose hated that. He always wanted everybody to go back to their own room and shut up when he was finished being the big shot. The thing he was afraid of. He was afraid that somebody should say something smarter than he had. He really amused me. Maybe I'll go to China. My sex life is lousy, I said. Naturally, your mind is immature. Immature. It is. It really is. I know it, I said. You know what the trouble with me, with me is? I can never get really sexy, I mean. I mean really sexy. With a... Uh, with a girl, I don't like a lot. I mean, I have to like her a lot. If I don't, I sort of lose my goddamn desire for her at all. Boy, it really screws uh, screws up my sex life. Some something awful. My sex life stinks. Naturally, it does. For God's sake, I told you the last time I saw you what you need. You mean to go to a psychologist? Psychoanalysis and all, I said, that's what he'd told me I ought to do. His father was a psychoanalysis and all. It's up to you, for God's sake, it's none of my goddamn business what you do with your life. I didn't say anything for a while. I was thinking, supposing I went I went to your father and had him psycho psychoanalyze me and all. I said, what would he do to me? I mean, what would he do to me? He wouldn't do a goddamn thing to you. He'd simply talk to you, and you'd talk to him. For God's sake, for one thing, he'd help you to recognize the patterns of your mind. The what? The patterns of your mind. Your mind runs in. Listen, I'm not giving an elementary course in psychoanalysis. If you're interested, call him up and make an appointment. If you're not, don't. I couldn't care, care less, frankly. I put my hands on his shoulder, boy. He amused me. You're a real friendly bastard, I told him. You know that? He was looking at his wristwatch. I have to care. He said and stood up. Nice seeing you. He got the bartender and told him to bring him his check. Hey, I said just before he beat it. Did, you, did your father ever psychoanalyze you? Psychoanalyze analyze you? Psychoanalyze you? Me? Why do you ask? No reason. Did he, though? Has he? Not exactly. He's helped me to adjust myself to a certain extent. But an extensive anal anal analysis hasn't been necessary. Why do you ask? No reason. I was just wondering. Well, take it easy. He said he was leaving his teeth and all. He was leaving his teeth and all, and he was starting to go. Have just one more drink, I told him. Please, I'm lonesome as a hell. No kidding. He said he couldn't do it though. He said he was late now, and then he left. All the loose, he was strictly a pain in the ass. But he certainly had a good vocabulary. He had the largest vocabulary of any boy at Whitton. And when I was there, they gave us a test.